it's a known fact that um, the tourism industry has huge potential. It's also a known fact that the tourism industry, if it's given the needed attention, um, the needed support, will overcome three of our top revenue earners in Ghana, that is cocoa, gold, and oil and gas. But it will interest you to know that, for example, in 2015, the sector got only about um, $4 million from government in terms of spending, while the oil and gas industry got over $200 million that same year. So it shows the amount of interest we are giving to that industry. So we are going to have a great conversation today. We have four gentlemen who will make up the panel for the discussion. They are well vexed in the industry and will, they will help us understand some of the things we need to do to propel it to become one of the global tourist destinations in Africa. We're currently doing just below one million arrivals. Uh, 2016, we did 932,579. Contribution to GDP of 1.2 billion. It's estimated that about 150,000 people are directly employed in the industry. But if you add the indirect, we are looking at about 350,000. We have 47,944 hotel rooms. And so, for those of you who have been saying that we should host the World Cup, that is. One stadium can fill all the hotel rooms in the country. Some of the key industry challenges that we are confronted with, human resource capacity is still quite low. Uh, competition, the tourism sector has become very, very competitive. We are competing with Cote d'Ivoire, we are competing with Burkina, Togo, Nigeria, and in Africa with Gambia, Egypt, South Africa. And so we need to up our game when it comes to marketing, when it comes to some of the things that we will do to attract people to visit Ghana. High electricity tariffs for operators, especially hoteliers. And I think Vivian mentioned, I'll take you through some of the things that confront operators in the industry. Uh, multiplicity of regulation and fees, taxes, levies, and so we will go to inspect the hotel. The next day, Food and Drugs Authority will come. The next week, Environmental Protection will come. The next week, it goes on and, and has to pay a commercial tariff. So those are some of the things that we've been working on. So our new growth path, we are looking at service excellence, partnerships, transparency and accountability, responsible tourism, respect for our culture and heritage. And the approach here is to come up with effective regulation and standardization. Strengthen partnerships. That is our next big thing. See Ghana, eat Ghana, wear Ghana, feel Ghana. We are launching this on the 30th of June. And basically, it's a platform to position, I am a Ghanaian, to position the various other things that we do. It's a multimedia platform to show and tell our untold stories and find ways that ongoing events like Panafest, Jalowote Festival, Hobechocho, Homo War, and like this, can leverage and support each other. We want to encourage people to visit our various sites. We don't have to just wait all the time for international arrivals. We need to go around, see Ghana, we need to eat our foods, we need to wear our clothes, and above all, we need to feel Ghana, either through film, either through music, all the other events that are happening. Thank CTFM for being the leader when it comes to creating awareness about tourism in Ghana. They don't only just create the awareness, they go on even to engage in aspects of tourism and I've been a keen follower of their tourism related activity. Uh, they call it the heritage caravan and all of that. And it's, re it's really impressive. A 2015 study conducted by the Tourism Research and Advocacy Center showed that the rate of growth 
Ghana's rate of growth of arrivals, the marginal rate of growth is declining. So yes, we are increasing in absolutes, but in terms of additions to the margin, we are declining, and we've been declining since 2001. So for us, there are six critical success factors in tourism. The first is vibrant, engaging attractions, and I'm happy the CEO has enumerated one or two of them. I'm sure there are many in the pipeline, because some of us were beginning to get worried that it still remained the gang of three, Kakum Park, Cape Coast Castle, Albina Castle. So we are happy to hear these very refreshing new additions to it. There should be valid data. There should be strong dynamic policy, a strong dynamic policy and legal architecture. For tourism to succeed, number four, there should be dynamic tripartite relationships. Relationships between academia, between industry, and policy. And all often, all, all too often, we tend to view each other with some disdain, unfortunately, and some patronage. I think this is the breaking point where we need to forge a new relationship ahead. Elsewhere, we would realize that industry, academia, and policy work together. So for us, we see tourism on the threshold of growth. But like has been said, the decisions we take today and the actions we take would either push us forward or let us retrogress. So there are two things that we talk about in one breath is the travel and tourism. These are completely two different things. You know, when you say travel, travel, I can travel for a need, which is my business. But tourism is when I travel for entertainment. So we need to develop that market. So maybe you will be very happy to see that almost 60% of the revenue for Ghana comes through foreign tourists. But then if you deep dive and see why they are coming here, you will see they are coming here by obligation because they have their businesses here. But, if, but that is not enough. Because when a person comes for a business here, he doesn't just stay in the work. He goes to the hotel to sleep, but then he goes out also to explore on the weekends the nice things, the nice places. Therefore, he wants things to be close by. And he also wants to eat good food. He needs nice restaurant. And therefore, you should be able to cater to the taste of different people that travel in. And when these people go back to their countries, and then they say, you know what, I traveled to Ghana for work, but it was amazing. You should go there and for fun as well. And that is how the tourism sector grows. Uh, this is what we see in terms of pricing. This is our own understanding. That as a professor was mentioning that having an access to data is so important because nobody probably keep a track of it. So we have tried and post here some data which we see in our business. Uh, you will see that uh, only 1% of our customers book 5-star hotels for Ghana, 12% for 4-star, and almost 70%, the majority of the people that book hotels on Jumia Travel, they book 2 or 3-star hotels. Two reasons. One, even when the business travelers are coming, they have a budget, and for Ghana standard, they cannot move to 4-star in that budget, number one. And number two, we also promote a lot of domestic tourism, Therefore, making Ghanaians and neighboring African uh, travelers to travel in, that is another reason why uh, the mid-section of two, three star are so heavy. On, on the, on the right-hand side, you can see the different cities by uh, percentage of demand. Accra, Accra of course, uh, takes 50% of it, and then you have Kumasi and Cape Coast and uh, uh, other cities, as you see. But they're very smaller percentage. And uh, you see the prices, Accra being 86 US dollars is a, is a basic average. You can imagine when we take the average, you know, somebody staying in two stars, somebody staying in five stars, so we are taking just an average here. This average hotel cost in Accra is way too high. 86 US dollars is very, very high for an average price. I can tell you in Nigeria, uh, this average price dropped down to 40 dollars. And uh, of course, they have a lot more hotel, a lot more competition. So these are the things. And in amazing in uh, in Nairobi, you will get amazing hotel in eighty six dollars. I'm just looking at the information architecture that obtains within destination Ghana. When the person gets out of the airport, what does he see? 
if the person heads to his hotel, how is that person enabled by the synergies? If that person decides to visit Molly Park or Kakum Park and he wants to drive, how often should he pack to ask, how do I get to Kakum? thing is, you do not want a foreign tourist especially to have to pull over and be talking to strangers about where to site, where to see a hotel or how to get to an attraction. Even for Ghanaians, when you are caught up in the middle of the night and you are driving to a hotel you have booked, it's quite unsettling to have to pack and call someone and then say, I'm going to this hotel, can you direct me? So can we imagine what foreign tourists are going through or even foreign expatriates who live among us are going through? The information should be clear it should be strategic, especially at tens. You have some attractions, famous attractions in Ghana, famous hotels in Ghana. As you are heading, you're driving, you're seeing the signage, so you are relaxed, you are comfortable. And then at a critical turn, you don't see the signboard. You don't see the signboard. Sometimes you go past it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, you've experienced it. And always there is a beautiful story behind why that soundboard is missing at that particular point. Either the carpenter or the designer or the logo has been changed. There's always a beautiful excuse.